Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us here today live on another edition of Arrive Partner Spotlight. This is a monthly webinar series we started recently where we bring in experts from the industry to talk about topics which are relevant. Uh, my name is Harish Tejwani. I'm joined with my colleague, Amy Hullet. So we'll be moderating the panel today. Uh, this is coming to you live. So if you have any questions, feel free to chime in on the Q&A tab below. We will be looking at the questions throughout the session. And I'm, we are going to live stream this on our Facebook group, uh, Arrive Mortgage Brokers. So if, if you're not on that, go, go join that. But we are we're going to set this up here in a, in a second, Arrive Mortgage Brokers. Facebook Live. All right, so this is being live streamed right right now on on. But again, welcome, welcome everyone. Uh, today's topic is very timely. Uh, we are going to talk about contract processing. Processing is the backbone of mortgage lending. You know, these are the people who take the file from the, when the application is placed to setting it up with investors, sending it to underwriting, ordering services, ver verifying employment, clearing conditions, closing, what have you. So, so they are the backbone of actually fulfilling the loan. Uh, there are some industry statistics out there, like files which have processors uh, go to CTC three to four days, you know, earlier than files that don't have processors. So, so we, do, we have to seen those stats. And, and contract processing is the topic we are, we are going to cover today. Uh, Arrive recently added support for contract processors about, uh, I would say, six, seven months ago, mid-December. So, so since we are only addressing broker community, there was a lot of demand, like, I have a contract processor I want to work with. You know, how do we include them in the file so they can process my file? So this feature is fairly new. And we have roughly close to 100-odd contract processing companies live on the platform right now. So, so thank you to all of them. We, we love all of you. And, and we picked up uh, randomly four companies whom we brought on this panel. So you'll, you'll hear from them as we move along. Uh, besides these four amazing contract processing companies, we, we also have Chris Radermacher. She's my good friend and, and broker owner of K2K Lending. Uh, if you have not met her, hugged her, I encourage her, go find her and do so. So, so with this, let, let's dive right in. So Amy, do, do you want to kick it off? Absolutely, thank you. Welcome everybody. So we've been really excited to have this particular webinar about contract processing because we are talking to originators every day who are being recruited over from retail into the wholesale channel. And this is a whole new world for them. You know, they had a built-in processor. They didn't really have any options or choices. They, they got what they got. And now they have this new world open to them of contract processing. And it's a little mysterious. They don't really know how to find them. They don't know exactly what it is, how to navigate it. So we just really want to dive into all of that so that everyone listening can really feel confident in using contract processing when, why, how, get all their questions answered. So definitely put your questions in the chat box. Let us know your what you want to find out, all of our panelists are here to, you know, just kind of uh, open the curtain, so to speak, and let them know how they work and how you can use them. So we're going to just start off. Um, we've got Fletcher and Jan's uh, processing here, and we've got XMS, and then Robert, uh, priority processing. Am I right? Perfect. So thank you so much for joining us all over the country. Uh, they have years and years of experience and work with a lot of different brokers, so I think we're going to learn a lot today. I'd like to just kind of start off with really talking about what is third-party processing, what is contract processing, and I'd love to hear from Chris, just your experience uh, coming from where you came from and how you learned about this particular tool and how you're using it. Yeah, so I came from the retail world. I actually started on the back end of a loan and then became a retail loan officer. And, you know, we didn't have contract processing. You got whoever the company hired and you had to deal with them no matter what. Um, that was one of the things that I like really pushed me besides being able to be more entrepreneurial, pushed me to go broker is that I could control that factor, that I get to hire who I want to work with, who I vibe with, who matches my skill sets. Um, and want and drive um, to get my deals done, right? Because that is something in the retail world. Unfortunately, they're W-2 paid. 
they don't really care as much. I'm not saying they don't care, but they don't care as much if my loan closes because their paycheck is still coming. Um, that's what I love about contract processing. They got to work as hard as I do to get the loan done because they don't get paid typically if we don't get paid. Um, and so that is something that I have always valued about brokering. Awesome. So um, any of our panelists, would you be able to kind of help us explain in your words, what is contract processing um, in your definition? Maybe Robert? <laughs> yeah, I'll go ahead. Um, so <clears throat> pretty much contract processing, you know, it's a, your third party, so you have no affiliation, but at the same time, in the end, like Chris said, you know, we're enticed to close a loan as much as the LO is. So our goal is to get the loan closed because we don't get paid unless, you know, the loan closes. And we want to build that relationship with the loan officer. That way it becomes fruitful for all of us. So, you know, but in the end, at the end of the day, you know, you can go out and find hundreds of contract processing companies if you really wanted to and find a new company to sign up. So, you know, we're enticed to give you that awesome service and make sure that, you know, every loan's closing on time. You're providing good service. You're keeping the realtors up to date. You're keeping the borrowers up to date and staying in, in talks with them. So I think it's, you know, similar to retail processing and what we do. But in my opinion, I do a lot more as a contract processor than what I did in retail. It's more work. It's, you know, a little more information. You have to be a little more savvy. And we, <clears throat> we definitely build relationships, not only with the loan officers, but with their clients too. If you are on client contact, we have in our company, we have a little bit of a structure for this is, we have a couple different programs that we do um, depending on if you want to have us help chase conditions or if you just want us to process. So a lot of times we're helping build that relationship, not only with your clients, um, and we're constantly reminding them that, hey, your loan officer is, you know, the one that's, that's doing this. So it's like, not only uh, do you have us as your team, but we have a seamless team across the, across the board so that we're, we're representing um, our loan officer in the best light that we can too. So <clears throat> really teaming up your, your, let's talk about pay. Okay. So first of all, contract processing, let's, let's talk about what does it mean to be a contract processing company? Because you are licensed, right? You have to maintain those licenses. Can you kind of talk about, um, it seems a little challenging just as much as originators are getting licenses work in the same way. Are you licensed in the same way that originators are, but you're just processing. Can you kind of talk about that? And then how does licensing come into play with when an originator is trying to find a contract processor? What, did, what should they be looking out for? Yeah, I mean, we are basically the same or more uh, licensed as those loan officers because as the owner of a contract processing we company, we have to be licensed as the loan originator in order to, to be a licensed contractor and as a broker in order to be the loan officer who is licensed. So we're we're licensing as brokers and as loan officers in multiple states. There are very few states who um, who have like exempt licensing where we can license only as a processor. And um, but so very often we are we are going through all those same licensing requirements that the brokers are going through. So when your state takes six months to uh, to approve you, then know when we're trying to add that state on ourselves, it's going to take about the same amount of time because we're doing the same thing that that, that they are. Wow, that's that's really good to know because I, I think that as a loan officer, just thinking, oh, it's just a processor, right? They're getting their experience on loans, you know, um, through their years in the business. It's like, no, they're actually going through all the steps that you are and are licensed like you are. And that lends a lot of credibility to your, you know, your commitment to this business and the knowledge base that you guys have. So I think it's important that everybody understands that and that it, they might be licensed in one state and they're, they're good with that. They might not want to add any other states. There's a ton of business, but really you guys, in order to be um, really have the door open to work with so many different brokers are trying to get dozens of licenses. And that that's a huge time and money expense that you're putting into this too. So kudos to you guys. Are you all licensed in multiple states? Is that something you're continuing to try to grow? Yeah, we, our company adds as we go. So we started off um, with our core states. And then if we get an LO that calls and says, hey, like we just added uh, Pennsylvania, it took six months, um, but we just added Pennsylvania because we had a broker who was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to 
be expanding there and would really like you guys to also represent me there. So, you know, we we kind of add as we go, but I'm sure all of us have our states or our core states that we that we started with, as, you know, or whatever state that we're in to start with and then um, add as, as it sees fit. And as it's also good for for money wise so you don't want to add like a state like nevada that's it's a thousand dollars just for the brokerage side and then if somebody sends you one or two loans you know <laughs> so so i'm definitely you know it's, it's something that we we look at and we evaluate and go hey is that state worth adding so stacy what what does that conversation go like with maybe a new lo that's reaching out to you is that one of the first questions you ask them what what questions do you do vetting with an lo to kind of make sure that you guys are first aligned in, in license and then go through that process. Um, there's multiple questions, you know, that we ask up front. Um, a lot of what happens if they're if it's a referral or maybe they found us on the website, you know, all of those things come into play. But a lot of times if I know the referral's coming, then I will definitely look and see what licensing they have prior to the phone call. Um, I always ask about volume and, you know, where they do their loans, but mostly it's um, tailored toward the type of licensing that they have. And, you know, if they're doing 20 deals in Texas versus doing three deals in Delaware, that kind of thing. So, okay. so there's a good question on the licensing. So does the company needs to be licensed or every processor you bring on, they also need a license in the state where they're their processing files, could you share? Um, so, I mean, you know, I mean, it's tough. Each state is different. So, you know, I mean, personally for myself, for each state that we look at doing business, I contact the state, the Department of Banking, and confirm exactly what they need. Um, some states do have a processing exemption license. Um, so, you know, for instance, Georgia, I'm licensed as a broker in Georgia. They won't actually give me an LL license. So you, they don't, each processor would just has to work under my license and then they have additional requirements for that processor. But in Florida, you can have an LL license without being sponsored by a broker, but in Texas, you need to be sponsored by a broker. So every state is totally different. Personally, for myself and my team, unless it's a state like Georgia, you know, we require the processor to be, have their own individual license in states like Florida, Texas, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, um, you know, each individual processor needs to be licensed as an LO in order to process there. But states like Georgia, we don't require it since Georgia won't actually even give the processor an LL license. All right. So in short, it is complicated, right? Just like yes. <laughs> any. So, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the fees for contract processing. Um, who can pay the fee? We get a lot of questions of just, you know, how how does this relate to the borrower's cash to close? How does it get collected? Um, because you are not a, an employee of the broker, this fee is going to show up differently on an LE and then a CD. So um, maybe Carly or and Chris, if you can both kind of give your experience on. Yeah, how, I mean, for how, myself, how, yeah, I'll speak from the LO side. Um, I charge my clients. They're aware when I put out my worksheet with the prequal, they see it on there. Um, the great nicety to it is that's, you know, I have the flexibility to cover it if I would like to in the end. Um, you know, if the fee doesn't work out for some reason or so forth. Um, there are some times where I cover portions of it, right? Because um, I found the processors charge different amounts based on how much they want to do. And I also have to be competitive to my area, right? So that's something I reach out to here amongst what others are charging so I can determine that too. So for instance, and I don't know Robert's fee, but if Robert charged 900 and in my area it's seven, my client's going to see 700 and Robert's going to get the other 200 out of myself. So, um, and that's the wonderful thing about working with the outside and you can, you know, some will negotiate sometimes based on your volume. If you're going to send them 20 deals a month, they're going to be more amped to probably help you get a lower cost because they have an average of closing more versus if you're going to send one or two deals, you know, you might not get that benefit. So something to keep in mind when you're talking to them. Would you guys agree, Stacy? I would. It? I would definitely agree. Um, ours is a flat fee straight across the board, just because it's easier for me and it's easier for the team that we have also for it just to be flat um, across the nation. So, 
And is so this something you invoice up front at the end? You know, how, how, where does this come into play for you to display this fee and, and for it to be shown in the loan documents? So we do invoice and I invoice when I assign loans so that the processor has the invoice when she's ready to um, process the file. Um, that also goes in with the, you know, disclosures and everything when we do the submission. Um, you know, different lenders like it different ways. Some like it uploaded to this portal and some want it in the CD screen. So it all depends upon which lender that you're working with, but we do invoice them up front. So my experience in the wholesale lending side is if the processing fee was not disclosed in the very initial LE, then it was really difficult to add that in later. Mm -hmm. um, do you all agree that, that is that still the case? Is this something that, that you stress for the loan officers it goes, or it goes in, it goes in box a so you miss it you pay for it at the end of the day there's not really a getting it added back in down the road so <laughs> it is very very important to pay attention to that box when adding um that in and even more so when you're running like smart fees and you go back to rerun your smart fees because something changes sometimes in some of the websites that fee will revert back to their standard amount um so keeping an eye on that that you make sure you make that change otherwise again you know you're going to be sending them a separate check for the difference so but and, i found most of the time when that happens i've never had anybody like argue about me sending them the rest of the money i mean at the end of the day they understand mistakes happen you know things happen you know as long as everybody gets paid pretty much everybody's flexible so don't like sweat it if that ever happens they're gonna work with you they're not gonna be like no it's the end otherwise you know <laughs> things happen <laughs> so yeah you know for us we always when we're disclosing a loan, um, we try to make sure that all those fees are on there. And that is one thing that we're, our team is very, um, you know, very adamant about. We, we like to get the disclosures out because that means we can make sure to add on all of those, those fees that sometimes like pop up later that you, you know, people don't necessarily know about. Like a lot of brokers don't realize that new construction almost always has a final inspection and then they forget to add it on. And sometimes you can change the circumstance and add it later. So we like to make sure that's just one more of those fees that we get on at the beginning. So you're not hitting those, those issues later, um, you know, and ours gets lined out in section B, just like the credit report, you know, those are, those are all being paid to an outside company. So section B, you know, there's, there's not a tolerance on those. So you, you got to make sure you do them right. Every mm -hmm. once in a while, there's a lender that will allow you to do a change of circumstance and add a third party processing fee on later if they can document that it was, you know, the processing company wasn't part of it at the beginning and that it was definitely a change. It's very, very rare. So don't count on that. But, um, you know, if something happens, you might be able to do it. So. But the great thing about a ride, we all know is you can go in and set your fees up front. So that's yes. my fees already in there. And every time I open a file, it's already <laughs> loaded in. Um, so that helps too, because I've had it where, I, the smart fees changed it back to the companies and then, but they got my fee sheet because I always load my fee sheet into um, for them to review and they caught it, which was great, right? Because I won't lie, you get busy, you're trying to get pre-calls in and you kind of think you hit the button and then the next thing you realize you didn't do it correctly. So it's nice to have that second look and for Arrive to add that in permanently, so. Oh yeah, that, that's one of the things we also did early on. So contract processors can define their fees based on loan programs. You can have a standard fee. And as the file gets set up, those fees are transferred over to broker's fee sheet. So when you go downstream and do disclosure, so our, our goal is to automatically include those fees just like if we just, so, so they're not missed by accident. It's really hard, like like uh, Carly, you explained, to get them back in the file if you miss it on first time. So so. Great. One of the questions which came in is, uh, do, you, do you see yourself doing typically complex and hard loans in contract processing, like non-QM or ITIN loans, or, you know, brokers are giving you their entire pipe, or it's a mix of them? Any any thoughts on that? So, so. I would say about 90% of our pipeline right now is non-traditional loans. Um, I personally have about eight DSCR loans, and four or five bank statement loans. <laughs> um, and then we can also help. So if we have a, a broker who, or a, a loan officer who is new to those loans, sometimes we can also help give them some insights on some of the lenders 
uh, that do those. I'm, I'm sure that everybody here would would concur that, you know, it's if somebody has something a little complex or a little something that if we already as contract processors have a good relationship with some of the lenders um, that we would we, we can suggest them and say, hey, you can, you know, maybe for DCSR, you can check out this lender and, you know, and see what you think. Or here's a here's a good contact for an AE that we know, you know, actually steps into the loan and helps take care of things. Um, so sometimes we can help uh, somebody who's maybe newer to those type of loans uh, step into them. And I love you say that because I do a lot of non-traditional. I rarely do anything not outside. I mean, I very, do very little not outside the box. And that's my first question to ask is, you know, who do you guys use? Are you used to working in the non-traditional space? Because again, I love everybody, but I need somebody who's going to help with the pipeline the way I work, right? And the loans I do. So I know they confidently close because we don't always have the time to crash learn an investor, right? Um, especially if you're picking up something to save very quickly. So that's a great thing to talk about when you have that call up front. I love when I get asked, you know, what loans are I doing, right? What what kind of business do I run? Because as we all know, we adore Todd Bitters, but we know Todd always loved, you know, UWM, the A paper deals. Well, my I'm on the full other end of the spectrum. I kind of if it's not if it's not weird, I really don't do it. So um, and not everybody wants to work with that, right? Because sometimes those deals take a little bit more effort to get to the table um, and whatnot. And that's not everybody's strong suit. So I love that you guys all say that. Yeah. And you, you guys bring up a good point. When I, my former life as an AE, I knew how powerful the processor was in really giving that feedback to the originator as far as um, green light, red light with different lenders and processes based on all of their experience, right? So how, how influential, if, if you can, um, you know, just say like you are with being able to share um, that experience, you know, is it a good AE? Is it, what was the last loan like? How, how did you have hiccups? Um, how powerful, <clears throat> excuse me, is that with you and your business and being able to help loan originators who are looking for that guidance? I was like, so definitely powerful, powerful. <laughs> pretty powerful, <laughs> pretty powerful. Um, you know, a lot of times when when they know or when somebody knows that, hey, you have that experience, you know, um, it it makes a big difference because we can also push a loan a little faster or a little or we have those contacts where we can call and say, hey, we've got this help, <laughs> you know, and it it makes for a good relationship all the way around, too, because then we can. Like uh, we got to visit UWM for UWM Live and it was amazing to meet our AEs and face-to-face -face and be able to be like, you know, we had a whole group of people that we got to meet and it really helps strengthen that relationship. So anytime that we're somewhere where we can meet somebody or or we can create a relationship or we can even reach out to some LOs that we're like, hey, I know we don't work with you, but you, we know you're in this spectrum of type of loans. Like how, who do you use and what's your experience? Like a lot of times we'll do that kind of research so that we can strengthen those relationships and make our loans, you know, get a better understanding, take a bunch of you know, how to's and figure stuff out. And so that we can, we can do it like our team. I think we've worked with over 80 different lenders. So, wow. you know, that experience really helps like bring that into light when you're trying to figure out where to place a loan or you have a loan officer who hasn't necessarily had good experience. And you're like, here, here's, here's a, here's my experience, not here's my opinion. Here's my experience with what we've got going on. I know Carly and I do it a lot. Awesome. So Let's talk about what makes a great partnership between a loan officer and a contract processing company. You all are running your business the way that you know you want to run it, and it's going to look a little bit differently from one to the next. If you can maybe start, Stacy, and then we'll kind of get everyone's opinion and Chris's because she is on that other side of it. But what it, if you were to give advice to sort of like this? These things make a really good partnership, good communication. Um, flow to the file so that you guys are both set up for success and you have a good transaction and you're wanting to partner together again, uh, what would that look like to you? 
I would say um, definitely relationship is at the top of the list. Um, it's our vision um, within our company to create the atmosphere that we're on the same room. And using Arrive also um, amplifies that. So all of our team members are required to, you know, put loan, put notes in the system as, as you know, the functions that they've done. It also creates um, less emails and it also creates less um, people trying to guess what's going on. I think sometimes when loan officers, they're kind of scared of contract processing because it's almost like dropping the baby off at daycare for the very first time. And like, is the, is someone going to feed it? Is someone going to change it? That kind of thing. Um, yeah. And you have to build that, that really firm relationship up front and give the the loan officer, the tools to do his job too, which means communicate with his agents or, you know, he is the face of his business. So it's really important. Um, within our organization, we copy the LO on every single email that goes out within their file, along with putting notes in the system. And so they have you know, if they get asked a question on a Saturday, like, hey, was that appraisal ordered? They can seriously go back and back search all of those things. So I would say communication is is a big, big, big factor in the partnership because um, you do hear, oh, um, I'm trying to contract my processor and um, she's MIA. We have several tools that we can use to make sure that that loan officer has direct contact with that processor, which creates again, um, you know, positivity for one. And it definitely, it definitely creates the atmosphere that we're all in the same room. So. And I agree. Relationships are so important. I think um, at the end of the day, because again, who you vibe with is really how it's going to work at the end. I'm a super strong personality. So I need a good medium person, right? Somebody who can be like, yo, Chris, and at the same time, not argue with me about everything all the time either. So, you know, it can take a minute to find that you know, personality vibe all day long. I think another thing for me that's super important is skill set. Mm -hmm. um, some things that I have seen in my time over the last couple of years processing is honestly like truly knowing how to do a file, understanding the guidelines and being an asset in that way. I have had some who tell me they don't do income. I 100% respect that. Yes, it is my job to do the income when I turn the file in. But if you don't understand income, how are you double checking that like my VOEs are coming in correct, right? Or that, you know, a pay stub doesn't look unusual. I've had a client who sadly changed their pay stub to make more income, you know, and the processor was the one who caught it because she thought, gosh, she had remembered when she had reviewed everything to turn in the file that suddenly the year to date wasn't matching up. So like things like that are very important to, I see as a skill set on that side, because you help me catch things as much as it's my job to catch things as well. We're a team, teamwork, right? Like we have to both be on both sides of that street. Um, so that's where, that's where I see it. But relationships, I agree with you are number one. So. Yeah, I think that is absolutely huge. And, you know, like you said, sometimes it's that second set of eyes. So where a loan officer might go, I can do this myself. It's super easy. It's, but it, yeah, it maybe, maybe some of the files are easy and, and you can handle them yourself, but I mean, you could be out getting two more, three more files and, um, you know, really increasing your income, but having somebody to, to give a second set of eyes to your file, because you, you might miss that pay stub because you've already gotten three. So the next one just kind of looks the same. Uh, yeah. you might miss, we had a, a client who, Bank statements didn't match. Um, some of the numbers had 2021 and some of them had 2022 and the math didn't work out, you know, and so we had to we had to go back and forth and be like, OK, this is these are not right. And, um, you know, there was way more to that one. But, you know, having a second set of eyes to look something over, especially in this industry, is never a bad thing. And I think it gives it gives a loan officer that peace of mind that they can collect it, they can qualify the client, and then pass them off to the next team who's going to handle the client as if they were our own. Um, you know, like Gidget said earlier, we are building strong relationships with your clients. Um, we never want to kill a file. I know I hear that a lot of times where, um, where people say, oh, processors are trying to kill my file, but <laughs> it's not true. We don't get paid either. And um, some people have a staff, like our team has a staff 
and our staff is paid whether we're closing a loan or not. So if we kill a loan, like we're still paying out of pocket for our staff. So, you know, we don't, nobody wants to kill your loan. Nobody wants it to not close. We want, sometimes we're asking you those hard questions because we need to stop it before it gets to the underwriter. We need to find the answer before we have to go talk to the underwriter and, um, and explain all these things. So, you know, having somebody to look over those pay stubs, to double check income, to make sure things are, you know, things are smooth and make sense. And we can get that complete package to the underwriter, to the lender, so we can get your file closed faster. That's, you know, that's everybody's goal. That's, that's what we do as a team. And I mean, be a processor and a loan officer, we are a team. It's our job to make you, you look good. So when your realtor wants to refer you the next deal, when your client wants to refer their, their family member or their friend, they remember the experience. They remember how good your team was. We're not our team, we're your team. So our whole job is to try and make you look good. Again, I think that's why I love contract processing because you've said it best and the multiples have. You guys don't get paid unless I get paid because the loan closed, right? So that even dedicates you more because I worked at a company where it was in-house processing and like they would squash deals because they didn't really want to take the extra effort to figure out how to get it closed. And unfortunately for them, with my background, that didn't happen, right? Because I'm about, we close, we work to do everything, you know, to close it. We don't do fraud. We don't put in things that won't help, you know. We want to run good, clean files, but there's more ways to skin a cat than what, you know, FHA says blanket in a thing, right? We know that sometimes I've had my amazing processors call up to FHA and ask a good question and then get it in writing that, yes, you can use this document instead of this document. And then we got the loan closed. So again, I think the overall theme, and everybody can agree, is teamwork, right? So where do you all get a lot of your business? It is tricky to locate and find third-party processors. There are search engines, there are Facebook groups, um, and those are all amazing resources. But I think like anything in this business, it's a lot of word of mouth and referral. So you're probably getting a lot of warm handoffs to other brokers who maybe have worked with you and had a lot of success. Um, Do you... Do you have any um, feedback as far as that first conversation? Let's say you've been, you, you're working with an LO for the first time. They've heard some good things or someone they know who knows someone use them that you don't really have a good relationship. What, what do you do in those initial conversations to kind of set the bar as far as, you know, what are the minimum requirements you're asking of them versus what you guys are doing? And, and or is that flexible? Does it change depending on the loan and throughout the process? Just so that our audience can kind of understand, you know, at what point are they handing over the file and how, how, how much of a gray area is that? Or is it better to have some kind of boundaries set up of who does what so you can get this file to closing? Uh, that's a great question. And I think it kind of ties with, um, with Lily's question that she just popped in there. Um, she was asking about like the difference between an LOA and a third party processor and all of that. And I think the biggest thing is in that beginning spot, you're when you're first talking with a loan officer and when you're talking as a team, you need to define what the relationship is because again, our job is to work with you. So you might want somebody who does only this or all of that. So it's, it's very important to define who's doing what. Uh, typically what we see is a third party processor and an LOA the LOA is not doing the licensed activities. Um, so in our team, the LOA is the client contact. They're the ones reaching out for pay stubs and bank statements and things like that, where the processor is actually processing, working with the lender, working with all the documents. Um, so I think it's very that's the very most critical, I think important step to the beginning is defining who's doing what. And also we, we like to talk to our, uh, our loan officers and say, you know, hey, the first one or two is going to be bumpy because we're still getting to know you. You're getting to know us there. You know, there's personalities, you know, we, we want to make sure that that everything fits together. So hopefully we're going to work together. If not, we do have other processes on our team that maybe we can send them off to somebody who, um, you know, the personality fits with better. But I think, um, you know, the biggest thing is understanding it's not always perfect on that first one because communi- everybody's getting used to the communication. Uh, but defining your your roles at the beginning is going to really, really help you move from there and um, and continue to get like to, to get better as a team. 
Yeah. And I mean, I think also going into that, I mean, you know, having flexibility at the same time, every loan officer is different. Some loan officers want to be involved talking to the borrower about their cash to close and their conditions and getting them insurance quotes from th three different agents. Some loan officers literally will hand us and be like, hey, let me know when it's closing. You know, so it just depends on the loan officer. Everyone is different. It just depends on who you're working with. So I think that initial call kind of ironing out those details, figuring out who they are. And then in the, I know in the back of my mind during that conversation, I'm already thinking, okay, my process, this processor would be a great fit for this person. Their personalities are going to mesh. I think they would get along well, you know, so I'm trying to kind of dig into how they work, how they communicate to see who on my team would work well with them. Um, and then also, like I said, I'm just having that flexibility to know what they're going to expect and then know the processor skill sets that would match best with that. And from the LO side, I think it's important for you to understand how you work, right? A lot of us sometimes don't. Um, you know, again, with my skill set, most of my files go in pretty clean. I do a lot of it. I struggle sometimes to get out of my own file. Um, and so, you know, but I've talked to other LOs and I, you know, I chat with them and be like, what kind of LO do you want to be? Do you want to be an LO who wants to be in the file because that's your strong suit? Or do you need to be the LO that hands it off and you just go work the sales side all day. If that's going to be you, then you have to get with the processing company that's going to handle everything for you and isn't super strong so you can rely on them. Because I think some of the times what I feel I've, I've seen is that you get pitched kind of something. And then, you know, through that workout process, you find out, okay, maybe they aren't as strong as they said on this side, or maybe they realize they thought even you guys realize that, you know, hey, I got started. I knew you want to tell somebody you want to do everything for them. And then you realize like you don't love that portion and you want to be this much in the loan. So I think that communication is super important up front. But as an LO, you need to be honest and say, hey, I suck at 1003s. My mm -hmm. files are going to come in like poo. I need somebody who's going to help me clean it up. And then what you're going to say is, well, we're going to help you, but you need to go look for an LOA to help clean that up. Because I don't think what a lot of other LOs realize is that my, when you put in a file for, to say any of you in here and that file goes in poorly, that does affect my good clean file, right? Because now you as a processor have to spend more time on that file, which my, means my file gets kind of pushed over to the side. On the opposite side, I know because I put in good clean files, you are probably going to take a look through mine, whip it out and get it in, right? Because you know you're going to have to spend x amount of time with the other person's files so it's a benefit to put in the best file as an lo because you will get the better treatment when i process that's how i worked if i knew Susie q put in the best file i'm going to hit hers first because i know it's going to take me the least amount of time so i stress that to all my lo friends by the way <laughs> Yeah, I see then, the post. I see the post. There's always a back and <laughs> forth on what we do wrong versus you guys. And I say that too. It starts honestly with us first. Good, clean file. You know, sometimes you do get busy and a file doesn't go in as perfect as the last one, but it's about the consistency of it, making sure you have everything filled out so that you guys aren't as guessing as much, you know, so, but right. I think from the processor side as well, you know, coming back to the yellow and being honest and saying, look, every time on a file, you know, this is missing. Is it because we need to set up a ride to ask that question, right? Because we all know I was missing, I missed a tax lien one time. So now I changed my application. You have to answer that before it will move forward, right? And you have to put in the amount. That way I can go and look at that tab and make sure I'm not missing it to work together again, overall theme, teamwork, to help educate us as much as, you know, us work with you guys. It goes both ways and not being afraid to have that conversation with somebody. So I agree. <laughs> because <laughs> I <knew you> <laughs> what a, well, but one of my favorite things is, and, and normally I, I start off with the newer LOs because one of my favorite things is to actually and coach is probably not the right word, but to help somebody understand why taking that application is so important. Why not just taking, you know, that your client says they make 20 grand a month on, on their, you know, their application. It's like, you have to go back over that application. You have to understand why the questions are, why the declarations are, you know, because it's, it's how you, it's how you find things. It's how you, you, you miss stuff. So like one of our, one of our loan officers who <clears throat> was so brand new and he would stumble over everything. You know, I spent out, I don't want to say hours, but I spent a lot of time with him um, on Zoom calls, like going over, hey, this is how you do it. And now all of his files, we, we close 100% of them. We it, It's not like before where it felt like he was just throwing something against the wall and, and sticking. So, 
you know, it, and I, I mean, I've, I've done it with people who aren't even our clients because I'm like, Hey, if you need help, like it is my passion. <laughs> it is the thing I get lit up about. So it's like, not only, you know, do we have some access to, you know, Hey, we can process your loan, but Hey, do you, do you need to learn this a little bit? You know, cause let's, let's, let's help your files get really good. Cause now you'll close more. And I think so, too, not to be afraid to fire an LO if he can't do what you need, because true. here's the thing. I know it seems like, oh my gosh, well, there's not a lot of business right now, but I'll be honest. If people start hearing that you're closing all these files and then the secret sauces, you're helping your LO and educating them and working together, who do you think is going to end up getting more business? Because if I feel that I'm working with a processing company and we're getting all the bad LOs and my loan pipeline slowing down, that's the beauty of it. I don't have to stay with them anymore. I can go work with somebody who is making it step up. And I have a few that do do that. They're not afraid to tell an LO, like, we're going to work with you. We're going to give you so many chances. And if you can't, then you, you know, eventually that LO is going to either have to start processing their own file, go back to retail or, you know, do better so that they have somebody they'll work with, right. Or realize they got to hire an LOA to help make their files stronger. So it makes a better community in turn, which I know it really does start with you guys. When we're better, we get more business. The broker community is stronger and vice the other way, right? So correct. Teamwork. And the more yeah. we can learn, the better. Because <laughs> we, I mean, I've been doing this 12 years now. So it's like, and I started off as a realtor. So it's like, so now I have, I have that base and I have the, you know, the other base. So it, it really helps like, take that, you know, that experience and that advice and, and move it along to, to somebody who you can lift up and help them even be better. Yeah. Yeah. And we've had, we've had that discussion with Ella. I was like, it, it, it doesn't always work. Personalities don't always, don't always merge. Uh, you know, there, there are going to be people that, that just don't work together. And we've had LOs that were like, you know, you're great, you but you really in. need somebody in-house, <laughs> you know, you need somebody who you can stand behind them and say, do this, do that. Or, um, you know, you, you have that discussion, you start coaching them. We've had several loan officers who started off very in their file and, you know, watching every single little tiny step. And, you know, then we'd explain, okay, this is why we're doing this. This is what this is. Like, this is what this condition is. Like, this is why we ask for another pay stub, even though they've given us a bunch already. You know, so when they understand what we're doing and why, then um, sometimes they can step out. But, you know, as long as everybody's being honest and open and communicating, whether it works or not, um, at least that way is, I think, the best way to keep growing, you know, as a team and as a community, because there's going to be a processor out there for you. Um, <laughs> it might just be in-house, uh, but, you know, there, there's a processor that, that, that'll work with your personality and there's, you know, there's a great team that, that'll be perfect for you. Sometimes it's us, sometimes it's not. Um, but that's why that's why we have such a great community. So I want to add on to this. You know, I think sometimes it's forgotten that, you know, when a mistake happens, the LO has to fall on the sword. That's, you know, when the lender jacks up something, which has happened, um, you know, I can't throw my lender under the bus because what happens is I have an agent now. He will he will work with me all day. He will not let me send it to X, Y, Z because Somehow he got the phone number to them and called and had a horrible, a worse experience. It was insane. So, you know, when something happens with you guys, I have to take the heat because otherwise they're going to come back and be like, well, as long as you use them, we don't work with you. And we don't want that. Right. So I think that's sometimes a little forgotten amongst everybody that, you know, there is a little bit of a ton of pressure on us to make the file look perfect. Plus there's so much more competition in the state of Florida. The amount of retailers who have gone broker is insane. So it's not as cool. I tell this to people all the time to be a broker. It used to be my whole thing, my whole pitch. Now I have to come up with something else. And so what is it? I have phenomenal contract processing. They are as dedicated as I am. They are standing by me all the way. They will dig in to help me solve it. Like that's my new standout versus retail. Well, you know, that's I pitch on how it was because I used to work in it and their mindset. So again, you know, I think it, at the end, I think, again, the theme is teamwork, right? Like, it's all about you and I working together and figuring it out. Like you said, if, you know, 
Carly is amazing for you, use it, promote her, help her, you know, work very hard for her. If not, because of whatever, go find that person, understand your business as an LO and go find the person that's going to help you be your best. It's the same as when you hire a brokerage, right? You go there because they're going to help you to be the best. You can't think any different than your processor and vice versa. So. Yeah, I think, wow. I think you bring up a great point is that this is, this is an advantage that LOs have is that they get to choose their team and they're choosing a team that they can then go and leverage and stand out amongst their competition. So there's all of these processors out there and these companies that they can choose to find a relationship that works, that is successful and then continues to grow. And it's going to take more than one file. Hopefully it takes multiple files. And as long as you kind of just get that initial connection of like, cool, they're licensed in the States I'm in, they have some experience. Let me learn from them and let's figure out this process together and take feedback from them as well. So I can become a better partner so that over many, many files, hopefully years, you have this loyal partnership. But what's cool is, is like, they're not your employee. You don't own that paying their bills at the end of the day. You know, you're hopefully going to show up for them and give them business. And, and that's what they're there for. But, you know, if tides turn, right, and we're in a down market, and you want to choose to self-process because you don't want to show that extra fee, or you don't want to incur that fee, you can, and then you can employ those contract processors when you have an excess of loans and you really need help because you've got, you know, more on your plate than you can tackle. So it's such a, um, a very cool, flexible tool that LOs can use. But I think at the end of the day, having, having a long-term relationship with one or more contract processors that you can, you know, pull into your team or use as your team as much as possible is so valuable because, at the end of the day, you don't even need to pay for it, right? It's just something that you're bringing in that retail's already charging for processing. They have all these extra junk fees. And what are you getting? They're just, you know, we don't really know what is the value there. It's just big unknown package. But now you have somebody on your team who's really fighting for that loan and for the borrower and representing you well. So it's, I just think the world of you all. So thank you for existing. And I want to say this, everybody's got to remember when something doesn't work on both sides, you know, being honest when somebody asks about the LO or the processing company, right? Because you and I didn't get along or he and she didn't get along for that doesn't mean that that company's not a good fit for somebody else, right? Um, because I hear that a lot of times and we all talk. And so that's something that, you know, I think all can improve on working on is, you know, not talking horrible about the LO because they do a bad file. It might just be that you guys didn't work together and vice versa on processing. Cause again, I know what I need for my files and who I work best with it, but it took me time to get there. Right. Because I've evolved as an LO. Um, I've evolved from being an LO to a broker owner, right? That's a whole different, cause now I have other tasks. So just working everybody together and, you know, really sticking to that teamwork mindset. Um, if you know Diona Base, like get with her, hone your skills on that side, LOs honing your skills on our side so that we just put out producing amazing loans and closing more and stealing them all from retail. <laughs> all right. So this, this, is, this is wonderful. We got some great questions and thank you everyone for answering them. We are kind of coming at the top of the hour. I do want to ask on the lender side, do contract processors, someone asked, uh, do you have to be approved with lenders, you know, certified with lenders? Do you work under broker's login? And I know some lenders are offering this as a service. UWM just came out with this announcement. There were many questions on that. You know, Windsor also has uh, this service where they offer contract processing. So we'd like to hear if, if the panel has any, any comments on lenders offering this as a service. How, how do you see that? Well, and do I'm you have to be this from my perspective, I still want to pick who I get to pick and I want to hire who I want to hire. And that may, you know, it's great. UWM is offering that. That is going to help probably a lot of brokers who are just jumping in and starting and haven't gotten into this amazing world of Arrive and AIM and BAB and everything else to learn who it is. Because I will say I'm excited. I hope to see all of you guys at Fuse. We just met today. There are thousands of companies. And sometimes when you don't have that direction, you have to go with something that's easy. But then they'll see, right? Because we all know, the flaws in everything. Um, mm -hmm. So that's my viewpoint on it. Don't be concerned that they've stepped up to do this. I can also speak, you know, I know AIM is putting together a list of some things that we've gone out to brokers and asked and processing companies to ask so that we
we can offer a list up to also those who are new or looking and searching because it's overwhelming when you type into bad who do you process with you will have 50 names everybody's great everybody does this it cut you know I did that one time I think I had 30 people like private DMing me it was like a lot to you know, know um, what to do. So I suggest to everybody in here, have a quick cheat sheet that you can toss out to people by email or, you know, Facebook so they can see, um, you know, what you offer that does kind of help and narrow it down. I think also it would make you outstand to others who kind of just want to call somebody and be like, we do this. If you can show it and say, this is your fee and it's open and flat out, that will help you set yourself out amongst the others. <laughs> And do you set up your own accounts with lenders? Maybe, maybe, or, or do you use broker gives you login, yes. anything you uh... We typically, we have to set up our own, um, we have to set up our own processor logins for an account. Um, every lender has their own, uh, their own system. So some like UWM, you have one login for across the board. Some of them we have to make, you know, separate unique emails for everyone. So just on a side note, as a processor, please don't make logins for your processors. Um, <laughs> we have to make we have to make a login for each account. And if you just, you know, send them the email that we emailed you on, it might override somebody else's account. Um, but, you know, we have so we make our own login. So we are typically going in on on our own thing. That way, if you're if you're doing a login, you know, things are like, let's say UWM it's registered under who puts stuff in. So is it the processor? Is it the loan officer? So if something is uh, changed or updated, you can see who did it. So most lenders are like that. There are a few that you have to use the broker's login, but most and of them we have our own login. And just speaking and about the lenders, oh. <clears throat> sorry. Okay. Speaking about the lenders processing services like UWM, I mean, I don't know about everyone else, but I know we help the broker with compliance. So we'll take all the signed disclosures, the borrower docs, we'll throw everything back into Arrive or Lending Pad or whatever LOS they use. I don't know for a fact, but I'm guessing UWM's processor is not going to be going into Arrive or your system. So when you go to do your call reports, your loan information is not going to be updated unless you're manually doing it. So that's something else that we offer as a contract processor is, you know, we're going to help you for compliance if you were to ever get audited. Everything should be there. We have a nice little list that multiple brokers use similar documents of, you know, signed application, lot confirmations, the flood cert, the signed closing package, et cetera, making sure all of that information is in Arrive or whatever LOS that, you know, that broker is using when the loan closes. That way it's all set for compliance. So, you know, Windsor and UWM, I'm almost positive their contract processing service is not going to um, okay. offer that. Like and you're going to get a round robin of a different processor every time if I had to bet. Yeah. Yeah. And, they're and not if you have to jump, bills. yeah. And if you have to jump from one lender to another for whatever reason it may be, your processor's not coming with you because they work for the other one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's a, that's a great point, uh, Carly, you, you made. So, so. Uh, all right, that, that is great information. And and uh, I know, Amy, you wanted to go over how do you set this up and arrive. I, I will mention we have a weekly training for contract processors or even brokers who want to set them up. Every Wednesday at 2 o'clock, uh, we have a, a product expert who will come live and show you show you how to use contract processing, how to get set up. And and Amy, Amy you had some comments on that. You want to uh, talk about yeah, getting I just set wanted up? To yeah, I just wanted to explain the way that the third party processor seat works. So we created this additional seat for third party processing companies. They have their own uh, account within Arrive um, and they must be licensed. And so once they have their account credentials, uh, they have access to connect with an unlimited number of Arrive LOs. So if you are an LO at any company who allows you to use contract processing or you're a broker owner, you can actually invite that third-party processor uh, into your team. It's done in the user settings at the LO level. And once you know just basically their email address that they use for Arrive, you can invite them into your team as a contract processor versus a in-house processor. And they will get that invitation. And once they accept it, they will have access to any files that you want them to see. So you can either mass assign all of the existing pipe to this new third party processor, or you can just say, hey, going forward, I want to individually assign 
by loan and my choice, this third party processor to this loan. And those loans will show up in their pipeline. They can filter by broker. Um, and then also, since they have those fees set up, when you do assign them, those fees will be flowing through for that particular company as well. So it, this seat allows these companies to um, really go out and market to all of our Arrive users and be able to kind of leverage that platform. And it's super easy. They have, they have visibility on everything you have in your file. They can do anything you can do um, other than actually take an application for you. So once that app is started, that loan is created with minimal information, they're gonna be able to see all the documents, communicate with the borrowers, have full functionality of everything in Arrive just like you. So we're pretty excited about it and we're gonna continue to develop it as well. Yes, and, and I'll just add, uh, at least for now, the, the loan officer has to be on Arrive uh, for contract processor to collaborate with, with them. You know, there are some requests, like what if my loan officer is using Kalex? My answer always is have them move to Arrive. It'll oh become easier gosh. for them. So, so, so <laughs> that, uh, and, and there are a lot of complications. You know, why can't we support independent contract processor? That's something we'll look into, into next year. I believe there's a question on that as well just now. But for now, your, your, your loan officers has to be an Arrive user for you to get access to their files as a contract processor. This is something which will remain at least for the, for the foreseeable future. But what we are also looking to do uh, in coming months is, you know, once uh, th these companies, there was a question on uh, who, who are the panelists again. So maybe, maybe we'll have all the contract processors repeat their contact information, but we will publish their list on, on our support website. Once we see uh, these processing companies have processed a threshold like 50, 60 loans and they're all closed. So this is something we are looking into, like how do we give contact information, not, not really advertising them, but just giving their contact information to, to all the loan officers on Arrive. So, so, so that way they know these, these companies exist, where they're licensed. So again, building a simple directory on, a, on Arrive support website, that's something we are currently evaluating. So more, more on that in coming, coming months. But to wrap it up, do you guys want to again, you know, repeat your contact information? Any any final tips and tricks? Uh, any 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 gotchas or anything to watch out for as we as we wind this up? Maybe 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 start with Carly yourself. Maybe we go clockwise and and. Here's your sure. opportunity to plug your company. <laughs> <laughs> so my name is Carly. Uh, I am one of the co-owners of Fletcher and Jan. So with Gidget. <laughs> um, we are a contract processing company. Uh, you can reach us at support at FletcherAndJans.com. And, um, and we have a variety of services from that, that we tailor to fit loan officers needs. So, you know, we'd love to talk to you if, if you're looking for, um, for some support. Great, Stacy. I'm Stacy Campbell, um, XMS Processing, um, partner owner. Um, we are licensed in 24 states, and you can reach us at info at xmsprocessing.com. Awesome. Thank you. And Robert? And I'm Robert. I'm with Priority Processing Mortgage Group. Uh, we're working on our ninth and 10th state right now, um, and you can reach us at info at prioritypmg.com. All right, wonderful. So, so again, we, we picked these processors by a random draw just to kind of make sure like, you know, we looked at everyone who is active, the product is just six, seven months old, but we, but we love our, all our contract processors. We will be enhancing this in coming months. And with this, I want to thank everyone for joining the panel today. The recording will be available on YouTube and this was live streamed on our Facebook channel. So if anyone who missed it can go back and rewind and, and replay it there. But but yeah, thank you everyone. This was a this was an exciting session today. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank I you. Love it. Learned so much. Yeah, <laughs> and you. I met new people. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great day. Have a great day. Thanks.